Hello, everyone. My name is Franziska Bonat. I'm today's host. And with us is Chris Hackard. And he is talking about how to implement custom scripts into your Nextflow uh, pipeline. Off to you. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you for the introduction. Um, so yeah, today I'll be talking about um, custom scripts and how you can um, add them to your Nextflow pipeline. I think this talk was inspired by questions that we see on Slack occasionally where people are having trouble um, implementing a, a Python script or an R script or a Perl script or, or some other script um, as a part of their pipeline. Um, and quite often there's um, not necessarily mistakes, but things that can be done to make um, pipelines a little bit better and more readable. Um, so today I'm just going to try and outline some of these things um, and hopefully um, everyone will be able to walk away with um, a little bit more understanding of how to how to do this um, with next flow. Next slide, there we go. So um, today I'll be talking um, a little bit of background, kind of outlining um, the problems and how we can solve them. I'll introduce my first pipeline, which is a next flow script that I've uh, very quickly written to sort of demonstrate how to use the bin and templates directory to store your custom scripts. Um, I'll quickly talk about managing dependencies um, and some of the things that you might need to consider um, when you are um, sort of packaging those together, as well as a really quick summary. Um, so background, um, I don't think it's a secret that in real world pipelines, um, you often need to use custom scripts, which can be written in different languages. So bash, R, Python, um, Perl, as well as others. With Nextflow, you can integrate any scripting language into your workflow by adding the corresponding shebang to the code blocks or the script block. Um, and I'll demonstrate this really quickly um, in the next couple of slides. Um, and you can avoid keeping large code blocks in your main workflow by executing them as custom scripts. So while most scripts, um, some scripts can be really short, some can be really long, and to improve readability, it's recommended that you store these elsewhere and then execute them um, using Nextflow rather than just having a big, a big really sort of tr troublesome code block, uh, which can be quite uh, difficult to get through if you are um, trying to read through someone else's code. So this is my first pipeline, um, which is a, a Nextflow pipeline that I've written. Um, as you can see, it contains a single process called MyScript, which is going to take um, string values as an input um, and give standard output. Um, in the script block there, you'll see that all it's doing is taking um, the strings defined um, with the name str from my input, um, and it's going to turn all the lowercase letters into uppercase letters. Um, so nothing too complicated. So this is a really simple, um, in this case, single line of code. Um, in reality, your script could be much, much larger um, and also written in a different language. Um, in the workflow block down the bottom here, uh, we have this, that, and other being the three string inputs that we're taking um, from the channel. I'm piping that into my process and then just using the view operator to show that in my output, uh, my, in my screen um, terminal window. So as I mentioned earlier as well, you can just easily add a shebang to the top of the script block to change the language of that script block. Um, in this example here, I've changed um, changed the script from sort of bash to an R script. Um, and what I've done here is just rewritten um, my, my sort of my job or what I was trying to do, which is turning um, lowercase letters to uppercase letters using this to upper um, function, which is a base function in R, um, and then just catting that. So I'm printing that out to the screen. Um, nothing else has changed in this um, pipeline, um, apart from um, this here in the script block. Um, I just want to point out that, that shebang again, um, because this, in this case, it's an R script, but you could also include Python, Perl, um, like I said, any other script in this, um, any other shebang to, to um, decide which, which type of scripting language you'd like to use. Um, so this is just a really short um, um, animation of what this pipeline is actually doing. Um, and as you can see, it's just running the pipeline and printing that other and this all in capital letters. Um, so this is just those three strings that I've included there uh, being printed out to, to the command window. Uh, and just once again, so it's just executing that pipeline and printing those out. So while this is a, is a short um, single line of, of code, um, if it was much larger, you might automatically think, okay, I want to remove this and have it as an executable R script somewhere else in the pipeline or, or someone else on your system. Um, and this is what I've done here. So I've decided to call uh, my code block, uh, my first script.r, just because it's an R script. Um, I have changed this slightly. 
um, which I'm using command arguments to allow for um, an input to be taken um, as this script is execute, executed in my script block. Um, so that's what's happening up here. We've got my first script um, taking the command arguments um, true. So it's going to take the trailing um, arguments and um, absorb them as a part of the script. Um, down here in my, my pipeline, um, what we'll see has changed is that we've got this full path um, to my first script. Um, and then it's using this STR, which is the input or the named input um, as a part of this process. So what I've done here, and this, this will work on my system, um, assuming that full path to my first script is a real, real file path, um, this will work on my system, but it's not overly portable. Um, with Nextflow, I think one of its greatest strengths is the portability of the pipelines. Um, so there are other ways to sort of do this so that if you were to try and share this pipeline with someone else, you wouldn't need to hard code in this file path again. Um, you would just be able to do this um, automatically using using um, bin or templates, um, which I'm about to talk about. Um, one thing I did want to point out here is that if you are making um, a script um, from your code block, like I have done here, you do need to make sure it's executable. So you need to run um, this on your on your code to make sure that it's got the right permissions. So the first way that you can store your scripts is using a bin directory. So instead of trying to sort of um, include your, your first, my first R script as a part of the directory, the same directory as your, your pipeline, what you can do is create a folder called bin and then store your scripts in there. So what Nextflow does is whenever you execute um, pipeline, it will look for the bin folder within the, within the directory of your pipeline. Um, and if it's there, it'll mount the files um, or the scripts in that folder to your path, and they'll be automatically executable um, in your pipeline. So what that will look like um, is here, you've got my first script in the bin directory. This is in the same directory as you'd expect um, your, your pipeline to be in. Um, this is the same script um, as before, um, but the only difference here is that it's got a different, um, you're not having to specify the whole file path. Um, you can just have it here in the bin directory. In your script block, the only thing that's changed is instead of having your whole file path, you've just got my first script.r. And what Nextflow will do is automatically, like I said, um, mount this file, mount this script um, in your bin, um, and it'll be execut executable automatically, um, which is a really powerful way of storing um, the script. You can have lots of different scripts in a bin directory, and they can all be executable automatically. Um, there's also another way to do this, which is um, using the templates directory. Um, so this is very similar to a bin directory in that you can have templates, um, a folder called templates um, next to your pipeline file um, with your script or, um, with your script stored in there. Now there are a couple of differences that you might notice. Um, while of course it is in a different folder, so it's in this templates directory. Um, here I don't need to specify arguments or the arguments command that you saw previously because what Nextflow will do is treat this I put this. I guess it'll treat this exactly like you'd expect um, a script block to be um, specified. And what it will do um, is using this template, it'll just look in the templates folder and execute this as if it was a code block included here um, in the speech marks. Um, what you'll also notice is that here um, I've included um, this named input um, and it'll automatically be able to use this straight away. You don't need to use arguments like you did with the BIM directory. So the next thing is dependencies. So the scripts I have been executing um, work because I've R installed on my system locally. But if you are using it on a different system or you want it to be 100% reproducible on a different, um, on a, on a different system, um, you will need to consider dependencies and how they're managed. So dependencies with a custom script are managed in the same way as other tools. Um, and I'll show this very shortly with some examples. Um, but of course, with a custom script like this, you might expect to have one or more different tools or packages, which can add complexity to um, how these are sort of integrated and stored. Um, as with other tools, um, if you are using multiple tools in the same uh, module or same process, um, you can store them in a combined um, mold container. While I won't go into it today, there are helper tools and documentation available. Um, these slides will be available. Um, and both of these are clickable links where you can sort of uh, read a little bit more about this, about how um, NFCore has a modules mold function that can help you find the mold container with the dependencies you're looking for, um, as well as how to package um, multiple containers in one 
um, in one malt container. So this is an example of a malt container, uh, not a malt, well, it's not a malt container, of a um, how to use dependencies with the custom R script. So this is directly from the RNA seq pipeline. Um, the process is called salmon summarized um, experiment. Um, and what you will notice is that down here in the code block, we have um, salmon summarized experiment.r. Um, and this is an executable R, um, R script with a couple of um, argument inputs. Um, and at the top here, we have um, the conda and container uh, declarations. Um, and this situation is just the single um, R, R package and tool. Um, so this is R base as a part of this, this package already. Um, so you only need to specify this once. Um, and this is also already have um, the Galaxy project and bio containers um, images containers available. Um, so this is a relatively simple example um, with just the one tool, but you can also have an absolute monster. Um, also from the RNA seq pipeline here, we have the DSeq2 um, QC um, process. Um, and what you can see here is that we have um, a very large number of different um, tools that are implemented as a part of this. Um, in this case, um, a mold container has been created, um, which contains all of these. Um, this is kind of a, a probably not a great example because the versions of these tools haven't been pinned to the um, to the Conda, to Conda tools, um, and that's because there were conflicts um, as this was getting created. Um, but normally you might expect to sort of see um, some, some version numbers after each of these. Um, again, this is um, probably a bit more of a monster of a script. Um, I haven't shown this here, but you can find it by going and looking into the RNA seq repository. And what you can see here is that this is an executable R script again uh, with a number of different um, inputs that can be taken as arguments. So um, just kind of summarize what I've covered today. Um, is that Nextflow can use custom scripts written from many different languages. Scripts can be stored in both the bin or the templates directory, and both of these will be available to the Nextflow script, um, meaning that you don't need to specify um, an absolute or a relative path as you're um, executing a script. Um, and it's really fantastic to do this because it makes your scripts much more portable um, and usable by others. Um, dependencies can be managed using Conda um, and containers. And the examples I've shown, um, you can see that it can be quite simple or much more complex with the use of uh, multi containers to help you store all those together um, with singularity and Conda images. Um, and with that, I will finish. I think we're um, probably about where I thought we'd be for time. Um, and I'll finish on this. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to uh, do my best to answer them. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so anyone can now unmute themselves. If there are any questions, you can just ask them or put them in the chat and I will read them out. So there is one question in the chat. Uh, if you're on a newer Nextflow version, oh no, that's I think a, a comment. If you're on a newer Nextflow version, there's also an, a, a link to uh, module binaries. <laughs> Um, yes, um, exactly. Um, so I've included um, probably some simple examples here using the bin and templates directory. Um, you can also store these scripts another way in the um, along with modules. Um, but I haven't gone into that as much. There is documentation on this on the Nextplay website. Um, but today I just wanted to focus on probably what I think are the more um, the easy examples, um, the simple examples. But if you do these well, um, you probably don't need to do the more complicated um, systems or com complicated techniques. Okay, uh, uh, John is potentially asking a question. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Thanks. Great uh, talk. Uh, I was just wondering if if there are small scripts or uh, routines that one used uh, often and in many different pipelines. Is it, for example, possible to put them on, a, let's say, a GitHub repo and then pull them in or? to have a script stored in some common area? Uh, good question. So I think at the moment, most custom scripts are stored um, locally and executed locally. Um, so compared to any core modules, which um, kind of the shed where you can sort of download them directly. Um, most examples of custom scripts, I think are um, stored locally, but with, um, as I mentioned very briefly just before, um, you can store scripts locally um, alongside a module uh, with templates, and that could also be downloaded 
um, at the same time as a module. I don't think that's really being done yet, um, but there's nothing stopping you from sort of copying and pasting these scripts into your own um, Nextflow pipeline and executing them directly from um, the bin directory or the templates directory. Um, so I guess I guess the bottom line is not that I know of, but it could be done. Um, and there probably are examples out there that people have done this. Um, I just don't know what they are. Yeah, thanks. Uh, there's another question um, on the issue of portability when using custom scripts. Do you mean if the custom script is not within the directory tree or the um, base there? Um, so mm -hmm. with a custom script, um, when Nextflow stages um, all of your inputs for execution, if the script isn't defined um, or isn't um, included, it, it, it won't necessarily be found. So if you were just to include a script um, alongside your, your main Nextflow script, um, it wouldn't be staged because it wouldn't be able to be found when that pipeline is being executed. Um, so if it's just in the pipeline directory, no, it won't be found, but if it's within the bin folder or the templates folder, um, then it can be included and will automatically be um, sort of staged because it's in the, in the path of of the of the script or of the tool, um, which is a, a kind of, so I'm just gonna read the question again. Yeah, so if it's not in base, it won't automatically be found. Um, although you could probably use that to um, specify a relative path. Um, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend that when you've already got the bin and templates um, folders available for you. Okay, um, it seems there are currently no more questions. If you have more questions, you can always go to Slack and the um, bite size channel, or you can contact Chris, I guess, directly. Um, otherwise, I would like to thank Chris and, um, as usual, also the John Zuckerberg Initiative for funding these talks.